As travelers and holidaymakers make their way back to the Western Cape from various provinces, including COVID-19 hotspot, the Eastern Cape, is the province ready to deal with the influx amid rising COVID-19 numbers? Well, to answer that, uh, Western Cape Transport MEC Bonkosi Matigizela joins us. The Western Cape, uh, Mr. Matigizela, as Transport Department has previously had uh, serious warnings, also threatening to take harsh steps against uh, taxi drivers and passengers who fail to adhere to these uh, COVID-19 regulations. Just talk us through the program of action as uh, holiday makers return home. Good evening, sir, and good evening to your viewers and compliments of the season. Um, we we had the number of operations um, as the Department of Transport and Public Works. You know, our traffic officers have been all over the province. Um, and we have seen, you know, a, a reduction in terms of the transgressions on our roads. Um, and I think the level of compliance when it comes to our public transport um, is really commendable. Uh, and of course, you will always find, you know, few, you know, people who will try to take chances. Mm -hmm. But by and large, I'm very happy with the level of compliance. I've started this campaign as early as August, where I've been engaging with various, you know, partners in the public transport uh, industry, especially the minibus taxi industry. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we are now starting to see a number of people, of course, you know, coming back from holidays into our province. And we remain vigilant um, as the as the department to make sure that, especially now, you know, when we see you know the increase in the in the COVID nineteen cases, that really people comply, especially with the COVID nineteen regulations. I want us to expand on that point a bit. Uh, so interprovincial travel has been earmarked as the contributing factor to the spread of COVID nineteen. What has been your assessment of the situation in this regard? Well, in terms of the measures that uh, we uh, we have put in place as the province, uh, we are working very closely with the Department of Health. Um, and of course, um, the entire Western Cape, as you might be aware, the Metro and all the five districts uh, have been declared as, as hotspots. Uh, and there's a comprehensive program uh, that we have implemented working together with all the district mayors and the Metro. Um, to raise awareness and make sure that people comply with the regulations. Uh, and to implement this, of course, we are working with SEPs um, and other law enforcement agencies, um, because the only thing we can do, of course, is to make sure that the regulations that are in place are enforced, uh, working with, you know, um, um, other sister departments, as I said. Um, but um, as far as the transport is concerned, um we as i said i mean the operations uh, we, we have conducted just in the last week alone between the 28th of december and the 3rd of january we had 197 you know roadblocks where we stopped and checked um 21,471 cars um to make sure that people comply with the regulations uh, and of course there were 130 um dma transgressions uh, and of course, those people, you know, had to be fined. Uh, but by and large, as I said, um, we are starting to see a number of people coming back in the province, but we remain vigilant as the department um, working with other, um, you know, de departments uh, to make sure that people comply with the regulations. So you've outlined your collaborations with other departments, but you've also said that you are working with the city of Cape Town to ensure that uh, people adhere to regulations. Uh, just talk us through some of those measures and what can people expect in a practical sense when it comes to your operations that side? Well, I mean, as I said, working with the city of Cape Town and other municipalities um, is that on our roads, um, one, we make sure that people um, are, you know, wearing their masks, um, especially in our public transport vehicles. Uh, but secondly, and more importantly, uh, as you know, that we are not only making sure that people comply with the regulations uh, in terms of Disaster Management Act, but they must also comply with the road safety measures that we are putting in place. And one of the most effective one is the fatigue management um, a program that we have implemented in the Western Cape. And I'm very happy to report that uh, since we started that program, we have reported zero fatalities in the public transport. 
Um, and this is the program where really we monitor the movement of the public transport, um, you know, vehicles and make sure that people are forced um, to rest um, if we identify people who are fatigued. Because one of the major causes of accidents in our roads is that people are chasing money. They end up, you know, uh, being tired or fatigued and then they lose concentration and focus and they cause accidents. And since we implemented that, uh, we have recorded zero fatalities, as I said, and this program was started last year. Uh, but of course, we, after the announcement by the president in terms of people complying with the regulations, yeah. uh, we've intensified, uh, we've intensified the issue of finding people who are not complying with the regulations. We have picked up that you know some of the people are not complying with the 70% loading capacity, as you know. Um, that um, in terms of the long distance traveling uh, in our public transport. Um, those buses and taxis are required to load 70% of the capacity. And uh, those people are fined, and some of them um, are imprisoned for, for not uh, complying with the regulations. Now, of course, as you put, as you set out uh, a few moments ago, you said that uh, we, we just heard from the president uh, outlining that the country is now under uh, level three of the lockdown. I just want to get a sense, uh, as the Western Cape, are you seeing an improvement in people's behavior and just uh, an improved sense in the level of adherence to these COVID-19 regulations? Well, absolutely. Um, I know that... Um, there was a huge outcry um, from, from our government uh, when it comes to the closing of the beaches. Uh, and what we've seen, I mean, people really complied with that. Um, um, I mean, our beaches are, are, are totally, you know, empty. Mm. Um, but of course, um, for the first time, we've heard from our health department uh, that, you know, this festive season, uh, there were very, very few cases, um, you know, in their trauma units, uh, because normally uh, they get confronted with stabbings, uh, with accidents, people driving under the influence um, of alcohol. And just to give you an idea, uh, that in all the operations that we conducted, um, 24 people were arrested, but out of those 24 people, only two people were driving under the influence of uh, alcohol, which clearly shows that uh, by and large, you know, people have really taken up um, the call that we have made as government and they are complying with the regulations, except those, of course, that I, I spoke about. Now, as a parting shot, and very quickly, if you may, uh, what's your message to travelers using the province's roads uh, during this time, especially as efforts continue to stop the spread of COVID-19? Look, I want to urge our motorists that this is in our hands. Um, I mean, it's not going to help us to complain because we are unhappy uh, with what we are trying to do as government. But people must realize that um, COVID-19, especially the second wave and the new strain, is really devastating. Uh, we are seeing more and more people losing their lives. And we must really make sure that we continue adhering to the regulations. People must wear their masks. They must not only wear their masks when they get into the public transport vehicle and then take them out along the way. They must wear them all the time. They must make sure that they open windows so that there's the air circulation in those public transport vehicles. And they must make sure that they sanitize and wash their hands regularly. And um, and when we get to, the, to our destination, I mean, people must really stay away from crowded places uh, because the only way really for us why we are still waiting for the vaccine to deal with this thing and, and, and defeat it and minimize the impact is when we adhere to all these regulations. And um, that is what we've been really urging our people in the West Cape to do. That was uh, Western Cape Transport MEC, Bonginkosi Matikizela.